Through it all, Cronin told himself, eliminate the emotion, the frustration, the fatigue, and most of all, Cronin implored himself, don't settle. Don't let yourself settle. Well, do me a favor, Joseph. Settle your ass in the bed and enjoy your nightmare, you rat bastard bum. Because the Miami Heat went in there tonight and went 106-96 slept walk through the entire first half of that game and still put a throttle in on your boys to continue your just, I mean, just season from hell, dropping the Blazers 15-42 and 42 on the season, just a complete poop show for them. They lose DeAndre Ayton. Every guy for their team is injured. Every asset that they've that they've compiled for this poop show for Damian Lillard can't play for them. And the Miami Heat, meanwhile, steady as they go. They came out of the first quarter. The Miami Heat were like the third little pig building a brick house. Couldn't do anything to get the to, to get any kind of offense to drop 15 points in the first quarter for this game for Miami, and it was an atrocious one. That being said, I did not find myself at any point getting nervous because it's the Blazers. They're awful, and I just figured there was going to be a matter of time where Miami would pull things together and get things right, but it was a rough watch in that first quarter. Miami, uh, 6 of 21 from the field. And then things started to settle in in the second quarter. You know, offense got a little bit better. The defense wasn't necessarily better. a very sloppy game for Miami today overall. It was a game where Miami finished off the day with 20 turnovers. It was a lot for Miami. Uh, just could not take care of the basketball and clean regards. And, and, and was, you know, I think of, uh, at a point once they finally got their lead was just playing with their food until they finally got to the finish line. But this was a great game in, in in regards to the fact of you got back Jimmy Butler. Jim VP completely flipped this game on his head. He had had enough of the nonsense. Um, he took control in that second quarter to make this a, a game where, you know, Miami went down double digits. But, you know, instead of anything, I really think if they were taking on any team that was credible, and they played the way they were in the first quarter. You could have said Miami was going to be down 30. They were down 13. And the offense just got going a lot better there in the second quarter. A lot of that was just Jimmy getting everybody involved. He was just, you know, doing his classic bully moves right to the rim. Super efficient buckets, getting free throws. And then he was starting to get guys involved. Some nice passes to DeLon Wright. And... You know, I thought Jimmy was doing a great job. And then the Heat got it to single digits where he found Bam out of bio for a jumper. He goes and sits. And then, you know, things get a little bit herky jerky again. And Terry Rogier probably, you know, this is where the rut, you could just tell the guy was not back in, in uh, up to the speed of the game. But there was a moment where the Heat called timeout and Terry Rogier comes out, runs the offense, and it just, they just completely implode. Nothing happens. He has just no awareness of the shot clock. He gives like a, uh, he, he gives like a little tough pass to, to, uh, to Haywood Highsmith, who gives it off to Ban. There's no time left. So there's just no feel for the game. But finally, with about a minute 40 left, Rogier gets a gets a little rebound and puts in a bucket, gets a foul, and he gets one to drop. And then all of a sudden, it was like the floodgates open for him. He'd hit a three, he'd make it. Uh, you know, he'd bring he'd bring the lead pretty close. And the Heat went down in halftime, down fifty six forty six. But things were starting to look right for them. And that third quarter, everything just completely flipped on its head. And you just had to think to yourself, being Joe Cronin, you sit there and you see all of your, I guess, assets sitting on the bench injured, and you're watching this giant Serbian just light your ass up from three, get out on the run, 
and put in alley oops from Terry Rozier and is just throttling you left and right. How do you think that has to make him feel? One has to wonder. One does have to wonder how Joe Cronin just drinks that in where he sees Nikola Jovic just just nailing down threes and bringing the Miami Heat all the way back and evening things up with his alley-oop. Um, but in all seriousness, the Heat got off to just a tremendous start in this third quarter. Back-to-back threes from Duncan Robinson. And Jimmy Butler was just bullying Anthony Simons. He'd get a steal and slam. He'd start of the third quarter on an 8-0 run. And you really just felt like this puppy is over. Just a matter of time. But the thing that made it swing was Jimmy's defensive effort. He was just an absolute menace today in every sense of the word. Today, Jimmy Butler, here was his final line. 22 points. 7-12 7-12 from the field, 1-2 from three, 7-9 from the free throw line. Four rebounds, nine assists, four steals, two block shots. He, it, you couldn't do anything against him today. And mind you, this is basically with the Heat taking a quarter off. This is basically with the Miami Heat like zombie walking through the first quarter. Uh, but Jimmy Butler completely changed the energy of this game. Um, it was great to have him back today. Um, but I, it was, it was great because I think today you can signal to Jimmy Butler taking over in the third quarter. And I think Terry Rozier kind of keeping things at bay in the fourth. And so that was a great thing. You know, two guys who were not there, were not second night of a back-to-back were coming in fresh. They played like the fresh players in that second half. And, you know, for Terry, he was uh, he was really just in his bag with his jump shot. He he had it going on. He had a beautiful step back three to put the heat up six. Then he'd have uh, you know you you just seen he was getting into his you know favorite spots. The mid range game uh, probably his prettiest was this you know spinning one foot fadeaway shot that put the heat up eleven one hundred three ninety two. Really great to see Terry and you could just hear him. I heard him in the winter circle afterwards. The dude is so happy to be here. Um, obviously did not get off to the smoothest start with his shooting with the Miami heat, but you know, gets the injury. He works his ass off to only miss, you know, two games, two games basically in the second half and was just, you know, a a menace today, especially after a rocky start to this game. So, Really, really uh, nice win. The Miami Heat go to 3-0 and on this road trip. So, I mean, you're really looking at Thursday night as a house money game for Miami. But now you want it. Now you want to get greedy. You know, you, you, you have this matchup coming up, a finals rematch against Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. You get a day off so you don't have to do that bullshit. You know, Denver second night of a back-to-back in the thin air. You get to go in there. You get to settle in a little bit and see if you can get, you know, uh, if you can get a clean sweep road trip coming back home for some uh, some very winnable games. Man, the Miami Heat are are finding themselves in a in a really really great situation. They move up with this win officially to fifth in the Eastern Conference at thirty three and twenty five. They're only a game back in the win column of the New York Knicks, who are thirty five and twenty four. They're still within striking distance of the Bucks, who are 38 and 21. I don't know why people are writing that off. Miami now with five straight wins. Uh, now Milwaukee does have some stinkers coming up, and so you're going to need uh, you're going to probably have to wait them out before because they've uh, settled in and won three straight after all the Doc Rivers chaos, and you gave them the business. They get the Hornets, they get the Bulls. Probably don't have a real competition again until they take on the Clippers and then go out west for uh, a tough road trip, but. Yeah, man, Miami just seems like they've completely right the ship. Did this tonight without Tyler Hero, who uh, I guess that's the only big concern really is Tyler's knee and and how he's feeling there. But the, the pieces were just the, the you know the the pieces just all came together in the right spot. But it was really really anchored by Jimmy today. You know, Jimmy Jim and I'm happy because Jimmy did exactly what he needed to do. The team was floundering. 
They looked very much second night of a back-to-back-ish, and he was fresh as a daisy, and he took over. Him, Terry, Nico, they were... And Duncan Robinson, to be fair, too. Duncan Robinson had a, a, a huge third quarter in an outburst there. Um, That was great. And it's not even like, you know... Like Bam was good today. He was uh he was he was solid, but you know, you can tell. I think I think there was a little bit of a whew, this is this is this has been a lot of action for him. And so it was nice, I think, for him to get a little bit of relief in this game too. And then just a very well balanced game from the bench. You just got a little bit of everything from everybody. Jaime, Caleb, Delon, um, Kevin Love, everybody just contributing up and down there. Just a very balanced effort. Uh, and especially just after it being so clunky early on. But this is what Jimmy does, man. He said that it's that time, and you expect him to take the bull by the horns. And that's what he did. Defensively, it was just a wall in front of everybody, was getting steals, was getting turnovers, was getting Miami out on the run, was trying to get them some easy looks, was finding teammates for easy looks. And then when the the, the opportunities was there, you know, was either – Blowing past the entire, I mean, that had to just make it, you know, everybody on the heat bench laugh how bad that defense was where Anthony Simons is ISOed on him and he just blows past him and not a single Portland trailblazer tries to get in front of him. And he just has a vicious slam dunk. And it was at that point, you're just like, all right, Jimmy is, uh, he has put the exclamation point on this puppy. And uh, it was a nice, uh, a nice way to get this to a 3-0 road trip so far. 106-96 is your final. Joe Cronin, hope you enjoyed the show, my friend, and uh, wish you nothing but bad luck the rest of the way.